Okay, good afternoon everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'll call to order this meeting of the Library Board of Trustees for November. Um, Zach, any correspondence? None. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, would anyone like to, um, any, any uh, changes needed on the agenda? Or excuse me, the um, minutes from last month. Move approval. Okay, great. John moves to approve. Second. Wonderful. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved, five zero. Great. Okay, the first item on the agenda is that Katie will talk to us about an annual report change from calendar to fiscal year. Thank you. Just as an FYI, the, I printed them double-sided, so I apologize if that's confusing anybody. Um, okay, so we do an annual report. Um, we've done since LSNS started in 2018, and previously we were doing it on the calendar year. So all of the statistics and all of the programming and everything that we reported on was January through December. However, all of our other reporting we do for both the city of Escondido, the California State Library, everything else is on a fiscal year. So June through July, July through June, July through June. I'm sorry, thank you. And um, we were discussing and think that it would be a better fit for us to change our annual report to mirror that so that all of our numbers are consistent across the board and we're kind of doing the same type of reporting. So um, we wanted to ask for you to approve that. Uh, Virginia and I are on a charitable foundation that was supposed to be set up July through June and whoever set it up uh, before we got there, set it up uh, January through December and it is a royal pain. Okay, so I totally approve this. <laughs> Thank you. I move approval. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion approved, five zero. Thank you. Okay, you need our help with strategic plan goals section three, support Escondido economy. This was just uh, that review. I copied that from our last one, so the provide direction I think is a mistake. It should have been just review. I apologize. Okay, so um, as we discussed in I think the last meeting or the meeting, I'm sorry, I wasn't here last meeting, the meeting before, um, we've kind of created this new rubric where we're, we're focusing on one section at a time of the strategic plan each month so that we have a little bit more um, detail and the ability to expand on that and get more input. So this month's section is section three, support the Escondido economy. Um, the goal statement is that we offer materials, technology programs and spaces to support local businesses and for residents to learn, connect and have fun. So I'm just gonna run through it. Um, a lot actually is going on that supporting this right now, which is really exciting. And I actually have an update for this one. So support employment, we will have an annual job fair. Um, we actually have locked in a date, it will be in May, so that we can provide two classes the month before in April. We're gonna have, or I'm sorry, we decided the career fair would be the first Saturday in June. And in May we'll do a resume writing workshop as well as mock interviews. So that it's kind of that lead up for people to be able to, have that whole process and the hope is that at that point the universities are out so that anyone who's graduated would then be able to start getting ready for the workforce so we'll be doing the job fair in june um, the social media safety practices and classes is the next one and that is something that i will work on with my team going forward um, the mod, mod modifying the current facility most of those are dependent on outside funding and a lot of them are called out in the infrastructure grant. So there's that. Um, one of the things that's really exciting, so engaging elementary middle grade students by offering STEAM area for coding and robotics. While we don't currently have a dedicated area, we do have a partnership with Cal State San Marcos. Um, the School of Education's um, leader, her name is Dr. Sinem Siahan. She has been working with us to provide monthly STEM classes for grades um, 
fourth through eighth, and she has teachers who are getting their teaching credentials actually teaching the students. So they're getting hands-on learning and the students are getting hands-on access to STEM. And so we've just, she just got another five-year grant. Um, so we will be starting up those classes again in the spring. And we're actually doing a different thing this time. It's about 20 to 25 children and it's gonna be a progressive class. So we'll have the same set of students work on a project that's all month long instead of separate one-off. So that's gonna be at least the first month that we're doing in the 2023 season. Um, I think it's in February. And then the others are, again, dependent on the grant. And then the pop-up services in local retail and government, which is the last one, we're gonna start working on 2024 once we've got a better understanding of what that looks like. And if I could just add one other um, very recent program. So through a partnership with our Innovate 78 sister cities, we are now a part of a program, a workforce development program called the Job Readiness Room. And this is really exciting. It's been piloted in Carlsbad and the technology platform has been developed already and has been um, in use in Carlsbad now for a couple of months. And essentially the concept behind it is a really strong partnership with the economic development departments of each of the cities working in coordination with their chambers of commerce. And the chambers have helped to identify businesses, employers that are seeking particularly people in the service and hospitality industry. These are likely not people that are on Indeed or Monster or the more traditional job seeking type of sites. And they are people people who need a little bit of um, workforce development training. So they, they create a cohort of these interested potential employees and they run them through a certification program, self-paced, that they access through the library. So that's where the library comes in. And then they partner them and they guarantee them an interview with local employers. So uh, it's still very early on in the works. We are kind of soft launching it this month. And then I'm sure Dara at the next board meeting will have an update on how that's going. And we'll have some marketing materials that we can share with you guys to help us get the word out to interested people who may be seeking this type of assistance in getting a job um, in the hospitality and service field. That's remarkable. Katie, how uh, is, is the 20 to 25 kids for the STEM program, is that just first come first serve or how do we select them? Yeah, so they have to register on the Cal State San Marcos website. I don't know how it's determined, but my understanding is in the past it's been first come, first serve. And if they don't register and there's still room available, like kids who walk in can take it. I know that because we're doing the structured like series, I think there may be more to it this time around. Like there may be required registration, but in the past it's been a combination of those. Who is going to be your target audience for the um, social media safety and best practices classes? So we're in early stages of reviewing it. I know we're definitely going to do one for seniors. Um, there's just a lot of scams out there, unfortunately, and they do tend to target folks that are older. So we'll definitely be looking at kind of literacy. So figuring out is this genuine or not, or when you get those friend requests from someone you're already friends with, or it's like, hey, check this thing out, and it looks kind of weird, how to recognize those and what to do, um, or how to unlock your account if it gets you know, compromised in some way. So definitely things like that, because we've seen an increase of that on Facebook specifically. Um, and then we'll definitely be doing classes for teens and um, tweens for internet safety in general. You know, it seems kind of common sense to us as adults, but it's something I'm working on with my seven year old. Don't tell people your name, don't tell people where you live, you know, like just kind of very basic and that things on the internet are forever and to be careful about what you put out there. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Hi, Katie. I think there's a lot of opportunity for STEM. Um, funding to be out there in the community. I was just wondering, do we have like grant writers or anyone actually out there looking for um, 
any funding for to bring things into the library as far as STEM education? Um, we do have all of the management team. We receive weekly updates on grants that are available for various topics and various um, amounts. And that's um, one of the things that Youth Services specifically keeps an eye on. That's why we got the Library Innovation Lab grant. Um, Dan's team is very proactive. And then anytime he sees something, he will pass it along. Um, as far as any kind of regular searching, we do have someone at LSNS that does that. And if we're looking for something, we can address her specifically. And then she will kind of look out for kind of our parameters as well. So that's a nice resource we have in addition to staff. The city also has now a full-time grant writer, so he also is always on the lookout for library-related things and has sent a couple of items over to Dara and Katie. So um, we just have to give him a nudge if there's something specific that we're looking for funding for. Otherwise, he's monitoring you know, all of the major uh, grant opportunity sites that are out there. Great to know. Uh, Katie, I want to... I, I really like this format. I think we do a lot better with a little bit deeper dive than we did where you just threw it all out there. So I compliment you for that. Thank you. I find it a lot easier too because I look forward and I actually was just having a conversation with Azar who's our principal librarian of adult services and because I had asked her about the job fair and she had mentioned a cultural program she wants to develop which also lines up with one of our future strategic plan goal. So it's kind of, it starts those conversations earlier and it helps us to kind of get a, a better handle on some of that stuff. So yeah, I appreciate you guys approving the format because I really like it. Great, would you like to go into the director's report? Looks like I wrote you guys a book. Uh, Sorry about that. So we had a really exciting month in October because we launched Link Plus. Um, Link Plus is a union catalog, which it's it's basically like an, a free interlibrary loan service. And it has 72 participating libraries. Majority are public, but there are several um, academic libraries as well. Um, and what that means is that patrons, if they want to find a book that we don't have, they can click a link and place that hole directly through our catalog and that item is brought to our library for them to pick up for free there's no forms to fill out there's no fee associated they just get to ask for that material and it's brought to us as long as it's belongs to one of those 72 libraries it's an awesome service i'm really excited about it we have a courier that comes monday through friday every day and takes and drops off materials um it's very popular already and we just decided to do a soft launch in October and November because we were kind of getting staff used to the workflow and getting everything up on the website and making sure everything works properly and in that first month uh, we had 91 items go out and 13 items placed on hold for link plus by our own patrons and that was just in the first that, that last two weeks of October that it was live so that's was pretty awesome and we'll have better stats for that next month i believe did i add it on here so starting starting on the october statistics report when you guys receive that i have included underneath our ill there's a line item for link plus so that'll say the number of items that we've sent out and number of items our patrons have requested um it has been it was paid for for the next five years through the sarah cooperative which is really cool so all of our libraries and the sarah cooperative are going to get this service we were the first one. Carlsbad will be on board in the next month. So we're excited about that. Um, I will be doing a targeted marketing campaign for that in December. So you guys will see a news release. It'll be in the newsletters. It'll be on social media. It'll be on posters. We'll have flyers for people to take out. So um, for now, we're going to continue our regular interlibrary loan service because that one does go outside of the U.S. to other countries so if it's a really obscure material um, it does cost two dollars and it does take quite a while for items to come but i wanted to run them side by side for at least a year and just see what the usage is like and if if there's a lot that we can't get um, then i've got my report for the departments so in september adult services hosted nine programs with 140 attendees second saturday concert which is always very popular had um, the daily fair um, and they 
they are a very eclectic mix. Um, they had we had forty four people come live to that program and nine people attend virtually. Um, I'm sorry, nine virtual, thirty five in person. We also had two sessions of meditation and mindfulness with a guest instructor, which had 20 attendees at the first section and 13 at the second. It was popular and it it also aligns with our strategic plan goal for wellness. And we will be continuing that into next year. We're looking at doing it once a month on the first Wednesday of the month. Um, Youth Services also had a busy month. It provided 29 programs for kids, teens, and families that garnered 1,490 attendees. Um, If you remember, our children's librarian, Maureen Hogan, was awarded the $5,000 California Humanities Innovation Lab grant, and it um, paid for four different uh, multicultural programs. And so in September, we had the first two programs, the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival and the South American Adventure. Mid-Autumn Moon Festival was really cool because we have a local author, a children's author named uh, Dr. Virginia Lohagen, um, and she came and read her book, which is a story about the Chinese Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. The kids got to make lanterns and have moon cakes, which is pretty fun. Uh, And we had 44 people come to that. The South American Adventure, we had a bilingual storyteller named Georgette Baker, and she performed an interactive musical story time about South American countries. She had a show and tell with cultural artifacts that children were allowed to pick up and play with and ask questions about. And we had 36 people attend that event. Um, Literacy began their English as a second language classes in mid-September. We have 11 people enrolled in the beginning class and three enrolled in the level two class. But we are constantly doing intakes and interviews because we have so many people interested. The classes meet weekly. Um, We also hired two staff to assist with this and they are funded through the ESL grant. Ilana Norris works 10 hours a week, and Marcella Calderon, who is 30 hours a week. And they both uh, work with Myrna and Sheila to um, run the classes and work with the people who are participating one-on-one. Pioneer Room opened the latest gallery uh, exhibition, the Grape Day Festivals, on September 10th. And um, it features photos from Grape Day Festivals from 1905 to 1947. And we did that in conjunction with Grape Day Festival over here, where we hosted a booth and spoke to 204 attendees. Um, We're trying to do a lot more kind of crossover with the Escondido History Center, where we're kind of coordinating exhibitions and sharing resources across. So um, it was awesome. And we made some really great contacts with that outreach. And that's pretty much what I've got. I was going to add to that and give a couple of updates, if you guys would um, allow. So just touching briefly on the election, um, there are quite a few races that are still too close to call. So the Registrar of Voters still has about 500,000 ballots to count. Not all of those clearly are from Escondido, but um, we won't know which update the Escondido ballots will be counted by. So it could take up to 30 days for them to validate the results of the election, but we're hoping that probably by about November 18th, we should be seeing um, more of those ballots coming in. You can always stay up to date on where the ROV is at sdvote.com. They do, they have posted a schedule of how often they'll be updating the results. Um, Regarding the state grant, so we've received half of the um, contractual paperwork from the state. We're just waiting on the other half. And I'm working on an RFP to put out to hire a project manager for that project. So things, um, it's on our radar. We just think we haven't really made any progress on it just yet because I just got the, um, the documents from the state on Friday. So still working through all of that. And then last uh, meeting, there was a question about the partnership between the city and Palomar College. So um, we we did a, a Did You Know campaign, a social media campaign, and we're resurrecting that. Um, we tend to run them quarterly as just a regular reminder for people that there is this resource in that part of town and how they can access it. 
Um, we also had spoken, Dara and myself had spoken at our last check-in meeting about she, when she gets back from vacation, she's going to touch base with the Palomar librarians that were part of the strategic planning committee and um, kind of connect with them. And also there's some new leadership at Palomar College in the library area um, and touch base with the new leadership there about um, potentially exploring some other programmatic types of partnerships. I had suggested even, um, you know, asking if they would be interested in setting up a cart of free books that the friends of the library could potentially provide the contents for if they're just overflow of things, particularly um, you know, casual reading type items. That's not something that the Palomar College Library has a ton of. So it might just get people interested and, and sort of help make that connection between the public library and the Palomar Library if there was a cart that had a sign and some free offerings to entice people over. So um, just taking kind of baby steps with that but that's sort of where the the relationship lies and that's it unless anybody has any questions for either of us uh, I have a question about the I asked ask it last week and you weren't or last month you weren't here and so I'll ask it again how are we proceeding with the uh, trying to support and have them support us the Escondido Historical Society and the Palomar uh, and our Pioneer Room yeah, so Katie had just given an example of that relationship um, whereby the Pioneer Room and the Escondido History Center have partnered around the Grape Day Festival. So um, Aspen and her team did a really great job of going back through the photo archives and finding historic photos of the Grape Day Festival over the last hundred years. They put up a photo exhibition and they had they hosted a booth at the festival itself. They spoke with over 200 people about what the Pioneer Room has to offer. Um, we've also relocated the filing cabinets of historic photos from the Escondido History Center into the Pioneer Room so that they're more environmentally protected and so that Aspen and her team can start with their volunteers working on uh, rehousing where necessary and ultimately digitizing those and making them accessible through um, the city's website and then ultimately you know, having a link on the History Center's website to where people can access those. Um, um, really, the intention is, you know, just sort of baby stepping into helping um, the community understand the distinction between, you know, what can they find at the Pioneer Room, what can they find at the History Center, helping to make the, that line of distinction a little clearer um, with the History Center really focusing on the museum ephemera side of the house and the Pioneer Room focusing more on the photo, paper, yearbook type of collections. So just as an aside to that, um, the Pioneer Room staff and I are reviewing a few platforms for digitization. We thought we had landed on one, but we realized it wasn't going to do one of the key things we need to do, which is watermarking our images. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and we're reviewing two different platforms. We're getting quotes for that. Um, the goal with that is to work with the History Center so that we can eventually digitize both their photos and our photos and have them all on one online platform. Um, and so right now we're looking at that and then the cost associated with it. Great, thank you so much. Uh, all right, moving on to the around the room. Um, updates on anything related to the library or anything you want to share? Merrick, would you like to go first? Sure. I visited the library. I was dropping off my ballot, so I came in with uh, Max. We visited the uh, children's uh, area where actually he found a couple of his classmates doing homework because it was rough right after school. Uh, went through other areas of, uh, of the library. It was quite busy, actually, and the, especially in the uh, computer section. And um, and just like you know, you, you guys do a great job, and it's 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 it runs everything runs very smoothly there. So, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, like for the youth, youth services, the the author that you hosted, uh, Virginia Lohagen, was at one time a, a trustee on the library board. Yes, uh, yeah. So she's an educator, and she was uh, on a, on, a, on a board at one point. Okay, that's all. Well, basically, I <clears throat> I visit the library usually once or twice a month at the minimum, and I 
I just am very, very pleased. It, uh, it is serving our community well, and, and people are uh, at the computers, people are using their tablets and so forth, uh, back in the quiet area. I also like to go into the, to the bookstore, because I always have somebody in there that I know, and I'm amazed how many people are in there shopping all the time. It's really, really interesting, because with all the library where they can check all this stuff out for free, but they're in there shopping. So I think you're doing a good job. And Joanne, thanks for answering. I, you answered all my questions, one about the Pioneer Room, the other about the grant. And uh, so it's a very exciting time. Thank you. I just, oh, my turn. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I just assumed I was next. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that I'm very impressed with how much thought and um, organization goes into you guys recognizing the cultural um, differences in our community and really like doing the um, investigation to bring those holidays and traditions out to the rest of the community. I was, I mean, I'm so impressed to see just recently like the Dia de las Muertes ofrenda and I know that's very popular in our community and the Aztec dancers that were there last month and I'm looking forward forward to the ballet folklorico coming up I think in December um, so that's above and beyond that's just a couple of months of the year that you guys have uh, planned those things and then to see the Chinese um, with the lantern making and the Chinese mooncakes you guys are doing a great job so thank you for recognizing all the cultures of our community Thanks, Virginia. I do have to say those are all those really good big ones are all part of that grant funding. So major props to Maureen for going out, figuring out what groups we wanted to focus on, what our community was looking for. Our DIA program, I will report on next time, but we did have over 150. It's always a huge program. We had the community off friend us the second year we've had it. And this year it was even more popular than last year. We had it up for, I think, three weeks in the lobby. And it's just... It's just an amazing, amazing program, and we love it. So thank you. Great. Yeah, and I would just like to reiterate, I, th I am just so extremely pleased uh, with everything that's happened over the last year. I think we've just done amazing things. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I'm really looking forward to this month. I think there's a Native American, um, there's a talk. Um, I'm. And again, just you know, reiterating what Virginia said, it's just so great to see the inclusion. I think that's so important. Um, and then from a personal perspective, I've been really enjoying using the Sarah Collaborative. Um, some of the books that I read are extremely popular, and I noticed that the San Diego libraries have like 60 copies, um, you know, especially of online materials, so it's been really helpful to me. So great job. Please pass it along to our, your staff, too. I think everybody's just doing phenomenal. OK. Will do. Thank you very much. All right, with that, um, we can adjourn. And we'll meet up again next month. Great. Thanks, Zach.